Can you imagine if they started making like onion scented candles? That would be such a crazy choice. I'd probably buy one. If you can't eat dairy, then don't worry, I got you. I'm always coming up with new ways to make creative, delicious dips, fillings, and desserts without any of the dairy. I really just want to hashtag make dairy free cool. I'm going to show you how to make two of my favorite recipes that are traditionally loaded with lots of cheese and milk. First up, my masala mac and cheese, and next, because we can never forget dessert, my banana cardamom ice cream. One of the first ways that I dabbled into cooking, and maybe it's a bit generous to say cooking, was through box mac and cheese. I used to love that mildly suspect bright orange powder. But today, we are making my masala mac and cheese. The flavor profile is a little bit more elevated, but still just as creamy and decadent. Let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is dice up my onion. So I wanted to add some cooked onions into the sauce because I think it adds a lot more flavor. We want different levels of flavor and spice, and by cooking these onions down in some olive oil, it's really gonna get us there. I'm gonna peel this guy. I am just dicing my onion. Right there. Little rough, don't worry, because we are going to blend it later. After it's been cooked, of course. I've just diced my onions, and now I'm just gonna heat up some olive oil on my pan. Okay, my olive oil is shimmering, time to add my onions. I also wanna make sure I'm seasoning my onions with some salt and pepper. A little salt, and some freshly ground black pepper. Okay, these onions look delicious. They look nice and golden brown. I'm gonna turn my stove off, set these aside to cool, and get to work on my creamy sauce. Before we get going on my sauce, I have to tell you about cashews. When you soak cashews, they absorb a lot of that water, expanding them and making them a lot easier to blend. Because they're so buttery, when you actually do blend them after they've been soaked, they can create creamy dips, dressing, sauces, desserts, mac and cheese sauce, anything, you name it. But if you skip soaking them, and please don't, you'll get a really crumbly and mealy sauce, and that's just not cute. It's really important that you soak your cashews for at least 24 hours overnight, or you can flash soak them for an hour in hot water. Best part about this mac and cheese is it comes together in this blender. What could be better? Mac and cheese in a blender? I'm on board. We're gonna add our cashews into our blender. Make sure when you're making this recipe that you only use raw cashews. No salt on it, no roasting. Because I want a little bit of a sweet taste and I want that nice orange color for this mac and cheese, I'm using a roasted sweet potato. I'm just gonna peel the skin off with my hands. By the way, if you're worried that I'm handling a hot potato, I'm not. This has been cool. Don't worry about me, I'm okay. I'm just gonna take about half of this, pop it in my blender. You thought I forgot about my onions? You were wrong. They're going straight in here. Now to get that really delicious, cheesy, savory flavor, I'm using some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a really common vegan cheese replacement. Adding this straight in my blender. It adds a bit of umami as well. Now for my spices. This is a masala mac and cheese after all. Got some cumin. Adding a bit of cayenne. Cayenne gives me that heat. I want a little bit of spice in this masala mac. I'm gonna add some turmeric. Turmeric is not only delicious, but it also adds that really gorgeous yellow color that we're chasing for this mac and cheese. And finally, we've got some garlic powder. To help everything blend together, I've got some vegetable broth. Veggie broth is also a bit better than adding something like water because it's got a little bit more flavor in there. Okay, are you ready to blend? Okay, let's do it. And if you need to, feel free to scrape down the sides of the blender to get everything well incorporated. Boom. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt, a little more pepper. Back to blending we go. Okay. I'm really pleased to announce that my mac and cheese sauce is done. Looks amazing. 
Time to make our pasta. Got my cute little elbows here. My water is boiling. Don't forget, please, please don't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? I'm gonna do that right now. Pasta water is salted. It's time for our pasta. So I am using elbows here for my little cute pasta shape. I wanted to get that very iconic mac and cheese vibe, but you can totally use whatever short pasta works for you. A shell would be nice here, penne would be nice here. Okay, so I'm just gonna fish for a piece, see how we're doing on doneness. This is the best way to check. Just pinch it with your fingers or just bite into it. Perfect, our pasta is ready. Time to drain. Okay, don't drop the sama. <laughs> don't drop it. One more thing to do is just add our sauce to our pasta. I'm gonna add this into my bowl. I'm really excited about this sauce. Just so you know, this makes a lot of sauce. I like a saucy mac but you can totally reserve some for later if you want it to be a little less saucy. All right, time to plate. <sighs> Sorry, I just gasped. I was just taken aback. It's so creamy. All right, little fresh parsley just to top. Little bit of color, little bit of green, little bit of herb just to bring this out. And then I'm just gonna finish it with some freshly ground black pepper. Have you ever seen a more velvety mac and cheese? I just have to capture this. Here I go. This is gonna be an action shot. Okay, I think I got it. Time for me to dig in. I've never been more happy than this moment right now. <laughs> There's so much flavor going on. And it's so creamy, you would not believe there's no dairy in this. I'm not telling you to throw away your box mac and cheese, but um, I'm definitely telling you to give this a try. You will not regret it. Mm. So good. It's me, and I can never have any dinner or lunch without a little bit of dessert. So up next, I've got my banana cardamom ice cream and you're absolutely gonna love it. I'm gonna grab the ingredients. If you thought that you needed an ice cream maker to make ice cream at home, then think again. My banana cardamom ice cream comes together in a blender and takes a little nice nap in the freezer to create the most luscious vegan ice cream. Let's make it. Listen closely. I hate wasting bananas, it's so sad. Ripe bananas, really spotty bananas, are perfect for so many different types of recipes and especially this ice cream. They help create that really luscious, creamy texture without any of the dairy. I've got my frozen bananas here. I'm just gonna pop them into my blender. When I freeze bananas, I like to cut them up in little pieces just to make it easier to blend. Really important that you're using ripe frozen bananas because we're not actually gonna add any added sugar to this recipe. All the sweetness is gonna come straight from those bananas. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of creamy almond butter into my blender. Because the bananas are super sweet, I like adding a nut butter, like an almond or even a peanut butter, just to balance out that sweetness. I love using cardamom in this ice cream because it's got this really nice piney, fruity undertone. Really delicious. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can totally sub cinnamon instead. Now to help everything come together, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk. Here's the important thing. We're not trying to go for a smoothie here, right? So we're just gonna add a little bit of milk just to get the blender going. Time to blend. Time to scrape down the size of the blender. I'd rather scrape down the size of the blender a million times to get that really creamy, thick, almost soft serve consistency ice cream rather than add too much almond milk and be left with a smoothie. Can we just take a moment for my blender, please? It literally does the absolute most for me. It's key when I'm creating all of my delicious dairy-free recipes. Okay, I think we made it. I could eat this now, and you could too, but I do want a little bit of an ice cream scoopable consistency, so that's why I'm transferring it to the freezer. Okay, ice cream is in my container safely. It's ready for the freezer for an hour or more. I know, 
I know, I'm sorry, but patience is key here. Let's do it. My ice cream is done! A little patience gets us a very long way. I am just gonna cut some strawberries to top my ice cream with, and then I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> no, I did not just sneak a strawberry. I have been waiting for a long time for my dessert, so it is time to scoop my ice cream. I'm very excited. <sighs> I just gasped yet again. Oh, you thought I was a single scoop girl? Think again. Oh, you thought I was a double scoop girl? Think once more. Time to top with some of my strawberries, just for some color, just for some freshness. I would say this looks too pretty to eat, but I'm for sure gonna eat it. I will take a picture though. Okay, I'm ready to taste. It is crazy that you can make something this creamy with frozen bananas. It's crazy, it's wild. The bananas are so sweet, and we've got that almond butter to balance it out, and that cardamom brings all the flavors to life. The next time you're craving something super creamy and delicious, but you can't have dairy, look, there's options for you. These are so easy to make. I made so many of my dairy-free recipes in my blender. Easy to whip up, just as decadent, just as creamy and delicious without the dairy. Hold me back. I am going in again. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.